Welcome everybody to our latest video. In this video we're going to step through the process of doing a fresh installation of Ubuntu 18.04.3. Um, in this case I'm using VirtualBox to set up a virtual machine um, using the live uh, Ubuntu 18.04.3 um, installation ISO. Uh, feel free to use a flash drive, DVD, whatever media best suits your situation. But when you first boot the, the live environment you're going to come up to an option that allows you to either select try Ubuntu or go ahead and do the installation. I'd like to test out the, the environment first, select try Ubuntu, otherwise go straight to install if you know that you'd like to go ahead and install it. Your next screen will prompt you for your keyboard layout. So select your keyboard layout. Feel free to test if needed. But once selected, click on continue. The next screen allows you to select uh, the type of installation that you would like to install. By default, it selects your normal installation, which will include the full system, all the web browsers, all the system utilities, any games, office software, media players, so on and so forth. Um, you can also go for an option of doing a minimal installation, which will just include your web browser and your basic system utilities. Um, another option that is turned on by default is the download updates while installing Ubuntu. I usually leave this toggle on, and I will go ahead and select the third option, which is install third-party software. And for your graphics, Wi-Fi hardware, and any additional media formats, that's going to be your codecs, your plugins, things like that. So usually those are the, the default settings I select for the installation. Normal install, download the updates while installing Ubuntu, and go ahead and install the third-party plugins. This next screen allows you to select um, how you'd like to carry out the installation. In our case, I'm using a blank uh, virtual disk, so I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to erase disk and install Ubuntu. Not too concerned about losing anything as that disk is blank. There's nothing there, um, so I'm not concerned with setting up special partitions or anything like that. Um, your other options here allow you to either encrypt the Ubuntu installation or you can use logical volume management or if you like to set up a dual boot or some other type of specialized uh, partitioning you can select something else but in this case uh, we're just going to step through the erase disk and install Ubuntu and cl click on the install now button we'll get prompted to ask if you'd like to go ahead and make those changes to the, uh, to the partition table go ahead and click on continue and here in a moment we will be able to select our time zone um, I'm East Coast, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it in New York. You can feel free to click through the map to specify your location uh, per time zone. Again, Eastern Coast, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to New York, click on Continue. And here's where we actually set up the, uh, the initial user profile. Uh, so go ahead and, and pop in your username. You'll name the PC. You'll go ahead and go through the process of picking your username choosing a password, confirming the password, and how you'd like to log in. So in this case, uh, I'll go ahead and just plug in my name here. It's going to go and autofill a PC name for us. You can edit that if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and just leave my name as a, as a default. Um, again, you can edit that however you'd like it to show. And then we will go ahead and enter a password. So this will be the login password that you'll use to log into the account once the system is installed. You have two other options. You need to log in automatically or you can require a password to log in. I always go with the bottom option to require a password to log in. It's just more secure. So I take that option, go continue. And now we will go ahead and kick start into the actual installation. So from here you can scroll through this little slideshow. You can check out the installation. But basically the course of action now occurs that it will start the installation of the system. And um, then it'll go out and download the updates. And then it'll go out and pull down any of the, uh, the dependencies and such for the plugins and the third party codecs and such that we opted to, to install. If you deselect the two options for the updates or the installation of the third party uh, utilities and such, um, the installation will go quicker. Uh, the other things download in real time, they install in real time during the course of the installation. Um, so basically we'll just let it ride, go through the install. I'm going to speed things up here in just a moment so we don't have to sit through the, uh, the next few minutes of the installation. Uh, but we'll go ahead and, uh, and get the installation rolling for you. So feel free to uh, stay tuned here in just a couple seconds. We'll be right back with you. Okay, thanks for hanging in there. So basically, once the installation completes, you'll be prompted that you need to do a restart. Uh, so go ahead and if you're using a physical boot media such as a USB flash drive or a DVD go ahead and uh, choose to restart and then you'll be prompted you can't see here because of the screen flicker in this VM but you will be prompted to basically remove the installation media 
and then uh, press enter to continue. So go ahead and take that out of the system, uh, whether it's a USB, whether it is a, uh, a DVD, you know, however you're using the, the live media. Feel free to go ahead and take that out of the system and then go ahead and press enter to reboot the machine. Um, once the machine's been rebooted, the machine should go ahead and go into a normal power up, go through its post, and then come up to the Ubuntu login screen after a couple moments, moments during that first load. Alright, just as we had hoped, we will be taken to the Ubuntu login screen once the machine reboots. From here, uh, you'll be able to select the name of the user that you set up during the course of the installation process. Go ahead and type in the password that we configured earlier in the setup, then either hit enter or click on the sign in button. Uh, you will then be greeted with the Ubuntu 18.04.3 um, desktop. Uh, one of the things that you'll first see on the screen is a what's new in Ubuntu um, presentation. It's like three, four slides, something like that. Feel free to click through there. Uh, this will show you some of the high level changes that have been made to the GUI, uh, to the what used to be the former Ubuntu App Store, um, and a few other changes that are occurring within uh, this version of Ubuntu. Um, so feel free to step through this, go ahead and click next. The second screen in allows you to configure live patching. Uh, this basically allows you to install patches that uh, would normally require a reboot uh, without forcing a reboot. So think of it as kind of a rolling patch type feature. Uh, so if you'd like to set that up, go ahead and choose uh, to turn on the live patch. Enter your, your pseudo password and then on the next prompt you need to either sign up or log in with your Ubuntu single sign on account. As this is just a test virtual machine, I'm not too concerned about installing this at the moment. We're setting this up, so I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, on next. Uh, but personally, I do use this on my personal Ubuntu install on my uh, my physical laptop. It's just, it's just a very cool, nice, sweet feature that they've got in set up now. Uh, the next screen allows you to improve Ubuntu by turning in uh, usage reports and such. I usually say no there, but that's entirely your preference. Uh, finally, the last screen here will step you through um, how to locate software packages. So instead of using the Ubuntu App Store, that will now use a section called Software. You can click the link at the bottom to be taken directly to the software section. In my case, for whatever reason, it didn't load up here, but uh, you do see the menus. I go ahead and close that. If you do want to see some of the recommended apps that they've got listed here, you can click on those icons. It'll take you to their section in the software section, uh, so you can download them and install them on your version of uh, of Ubuntu. Go ahead and click on done, and now you have the the fresh version of Ubuntu, 18.04.3. Uh, so there's a couple little things that we need to do uh, to tidy up after the installation. Um, usually, preferably, I just go ahead and go in and, uh, and run an update. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Uh, Alt Control T is the shortcut for this, where you can find it by clicking the uh, the applications icon on the bottom left hand corner. Uh, so type in sudo space apt dash git space update. Hit enter and you will be prompted for your password again. Let's go ahead and type that in. That'll elevate your terminal to administrator rights. I'm going to go out and refresh the repositories uh, for any updates that may need to be run after the fact. Alright, I go ahead and type in exit here just to close that terminal out. And then let's just go ahead and take one quick look just to verify the uh, version of Ubuntu that we're setting at at the moment. Now as a quick note, in order to update to the latest uh, Ubuntu 19, you do need to go from Ubuntu 18.04.3 um, to 18.10 then on to version 19. So in this case you can see that we are sitting at Ubuntu 18.04.3 which is an LTS release so it's a long-term support release uh, so feel free to, uh, to jump in and play and, um, and just enjoy Ubuntu. Stay tuned for our next video. Thanks for watching.